Hey guys, so I was hanging out over at the Crazy Talk Animator Users Group uh, today and I saw this post by Andre Luis uh, Santos. Uh, he says, please can somebody tell me how to render the video without the white background? Precise, transparent. Okay, so he's obviously talking about precise transparency straight out of Crazy Talk Animator. And um, while, yes, you can export out video straight out of the software using a solid green or blue background, I don't always recommend that method. Uh, it's a good method to use if you have a lot of stuff going on, especially audio and things like that that you want to keep synchronized and you don't want to take a chance with the, the stuff falling out of synchronization later on. But that's stuff that you can also still work with. Now, by looking at this image that he posted, I'm assuming that what he wants to do is be able to composite this uh, video or this sequence here using something uh, like Premiere, After Effects, or some other nonlinear editor. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make an assumption that it's maybe After Effects, since that's what pretty much everybody else uses also. Uh, so... I'm going to show you this trick because I don't really see a lot of people talking about it and I think it's one of the better methods uh, to get the job done uh, based on what I think he's talking about. Um, so okay, let's uh, minimize this and go into Crazy Talk Animator and uh, here I have, um, I got Billy 2.0 on the stage here and I'm just going to create something very basic with him just so we can have something to export. I'm going to send them to the back real quick. And uh, no, I'm just going to leave them here. We're going to, we're going to keep it really simple. Um, I'm just going to drop some kind of uh, simple animation here, maybe like a dance or some, some crap. Uh, let's see here, dance. Let's do this MJ little move there. All right, so that's it. Did I do that correctly? 127 frame uh, 21 frames that takes a lot of frames to get all that done all right so 121 um let's just make sure we have it correctly yeah 121 frames all right so what we're going to do is we're going to export this sequence with perfect transparency and the way we do that is uh we're not going to export as video we're going to export as a png uh, image sequence and the reason we're doing that is because PNG image sequences automatically have transparencies and yes you can also export it as a GIF file but that's not always the best solution because it's harder to control uh, if you're going to treat it as video footage so uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even mess with GIF images the compression on the GIF images will also lead to giving you artifacts around the edges uh, either way, so that's not perfect transparency. What we're going to do here is uh, we're going to, I mean, and of course, I do recommend using large output sizes because this uh, also gives you uh, some wiggle room. Uh, so, for example, this is 1280. I'm going to double that. So, I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, 24 something. So, that's more That's more than double like that, I guess. Uh, keeping the, the ratio out um, it's still going to be uh, HD widescreen formatted stuff so it'll still fit in but it's almost twice as big now so uh, it'll give us more room uh, to play around with uh, on the actual composites without losing uh, quality because this is not a vector base once you export it um, so here we go uh, frame rate, uh, you can leave it at 30, at whatever the default is, or if you're working with like the international film standard, which is 24, you can actually put that there, or whatever frame rate you want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it as 24. I'll go ahead and use the super slam sampling option, and just go ahead and export. Um, I'm going to, um, let me see here, I need to find... A new folder to export to we're gonna call it test and uh, now we're gonna export this to that folder which is gonna call it Billy and uh, 
All right. So notice it's going to export a total of 97 uh, images. That's basically what it's translating to at the 24 frame per second uh, format. Now, this obviously, you know, the timing, you don't want to mess it out, mess it up. Uh, but because I am exporting a lot less frames that it requires, in many cases, some software will not interpret it correctly as 24. So this is where you're going to have to play around a bit, but I'm going to show you how to do that. It's super easy. Um, while that is happening, um, feel free to visit my website, Sinistar Interactive. Uh, dot com. I have a bunch of characters there that you can download, uh, you know, for a few bucks each. Uh, I'm going to try to make more characters more often and make them available. Eventually, I'm going to be putting out this uh, sort of uh, uh, little library repository thing that people can sign up for like, you know, 10, 20 bucks a month or something. Just have access to everything. So if you want to support me, uh, support my efforts, you know, uh, go to SinisterInteractive.com, check out, you know, some of the stuff I have there. I also have a program called uh, Puppet Producer, which allows you to uh, quickly rig up G2 character uh, templates in Flash in a fraction of the time that it normally takes. These templates, these characters are super difficult to create, uh, but with that plugin, you basically... Um, um, you know, get it done, uh, you know, as long as it, I mean, it takes you as long as it takes you to actually do the design work, because when it comes to the technical stuff, it takes it out of the equation. Anyways, uh, it's finished doing that. I just kind of had to fill in the dead air there. Um, so there's the character sequence there, you know, all uh, 96 uh, frames, or actually 97 because one of them is zero. But the important thing here is that they're all named with sequential uh, numbering. So you can see here they're all just static images with perfect transparency. And... Uh, and you might be wondering, okay, so, you know, the question was about exporting video with transparent, perfect transparency. Now, the only way to really export video with perfect transparency is really to use, like, uh, high-res uh, QuickTime or, um, uh, you know, uncompressed um, um, uncompressed uh, AVI files. It's You end up with, like, a couple gigs worth of data when, in fact, right here we have one folder which is 10 megabytes in total it's only a few frames and uh, here I have After Effects okay so in After Effects we're just going to create a new project here I'm just going to close that out um, go ahead and do the new composition we're going to just leave it like that boom 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 it's all done we're going to drop this uh, generic background in here just so we can have something to look at this is the projects panel. All we're doing is dragging and dropping it in there. And now we're going to take that folder with that sequence. I'm going to open it up so you can see it. Okay, that's the sequence sequence of frames in there. I'm just going to straight drop it into the projects panel. Nothing to do. Just drop it in there. It automatically is brought in and is treated as a video. So as far as after effects is concerned this is not a series of images this is in fact a video and uh and and of course uh with this uh video brought in by default it's uh interpreting it as a uh, 30 frame per second uh uh sequence so we're going to adjust that by right clicking on there interpret footage main and uh, we're going to change it to 24 because we know we did it at 24 frames per second. We don't want anything to fall out of synchronization there. Just in case I also have audio that goes with it. We want it to stay in sync. Uh, also, uh, notice it was only a couple frames, okay? Uh, I'm, if this was like a walk cycle or something, all you really have to do is export that one walk cycle. You don't have to do the entire thing or two minutes worth of it. Uh, we could just loop it. Here I'm going to tell it to loop it uh, 30 times. And I'm going to click OK. And boom. So we're going to drop it into the com composition. And it's just going to keep looping forever, you know, basically at least 30 times. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in that background so you can see what's going on there. It looks a little bit better for you. Uh, and there you go. There's no keying required. 
uh, if I had done this with a green or blue video uh, background there, uh, I would have probably had a little bit of a hard time with my character's shirt or pants disappearing on me when I start doing keying. So, yes, you can key other colors as well, but this is a lot easier. There's nothing to key. There's no plugins to use. There's no additional overhead when it comes to rendering because there's no heavy stuff to render. It's just straight up transparent video. And if we hit, uh, you know, a little um, render button there so that we can start previewing it, it's going to take a little while because it's the first time it's uh, pre-rendering some of the stuff. And I don't want to pre-render that whole thing, so I'm going to shorten this out. And now we can see it in real time. Perfect transparency. Um, another benefit of being able to composite stuff this way is taking advantage of features that, you know, Crazy Talk Animator simply doesn't have. And uh, those features include being able to use uh, a real 3D camera system. Um, for example, here, and this is this is just a bonus. This is not what you were asking about, but this is the reason why we uh, tend to composite these things in After Effects. Uh, so this is all just goes into the bonus round at this point. All right. So we're gonna turn this into a 3D background, basically. Um, we're gonna add a camera. Doesn't matter. So you can see that this camera. Um, it's a true 3D camera, something that uh, Crazy Talk Animator doesn't have. So you have the ability to add a little, like push the angles just a little bit more, something that you can't do inside of uh, a, a Crazy Talk Animator. So how cool is that? So we get a little bit more of a better 3D camera system. Also, we can do things like adding lights. Um, I probably shouldn't even go into that. But yeah, I'm not going to do that in this sec. Uh, so that's another video for another day. But suffice it to say, you can put lights in here, cast shadows onto your background elements, do all sorts of beautiful things, particle effects, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, guess what? Rendering out your background is not one thing that you actually have to do. So, so we save our resources for those more advanced things. Uh, all right. So hopefully that helps. Um, this is one of my custom characters, Billy. You can find them on my website, SinistarInteractive.com. Feel free to give me a visit and uh, ask me anything else. You know, I'm going to be putting out these type of videos more often. And uh, so I'd like to hear uh, more from you guys and uh, any other questions y'all may have. Just uh, send them straight out to me. I'll be happy to make y'all a video. All right. So uh, that's it. Have a good one.